Uh, I'll absolutely take it. Henry, as always, thank you for okay, joining us minute. today. I have, I have one final word. Bunt cake. Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are speaking with an incredibly talented guest. So without further ado, let's cruise on down to Arnold's and pick him up. He is an Emmy Award-winning actor, director, producer, and author whose multimedia body work includes Happy Days, Barry, Arrested Dear Friend, Mr. Henry Winkler. Good morning. And good morning to you, Henry. How are you doing? You know what? I'm doing fine. I actually have COVID. My goodness. Uh, that it was shocking. I went to the doctor and he called me the next day. He said, you've got COVID, fella. And uh, so I've been in bed for quite a while and I've been taking these pills and I feel way better. And uh, I hope everybody who is watching is healthy and thriving. Well, glad to see you are are weathering this storm. Um, again, it's it's not fun. I I dealt with it myself a few months ago, and uh, the inconsistency between people who have it. Some people were able to shrug it off like a simple cold, and I was I was knocked up for three weeks. So yeah, uh, well, um, you know, it's it the 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 phrase now is not uh, not if it's when. You know, and for three and a half years or two and a half years, my wife and I have been able to to knock it out, beat it off, and then all of a sudden, boom. I, I know you have been a, the greatest of proponents of, of COVID protocols and safety and everything else since the Absolutely. beginning. And I mean, it's a real thing, and it yeah. really is uncomfortable. And for some people, it is severe. So uh, why not be safe? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why at, at the shows and whatnot, I'm still wearing my mask because you know what? When I was wearing the mask during the shutdown, I was still going in public. I never got a cold. Right. <laughs> it would work for me. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, again, Henry, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, I'm encouraged to, to, you joined us today. I'm glad you were hopefully on the mend. And Barry. Oh Barry. wow, Barry is back and uh, better than ever. And once again, you got you yeah, that whole crew, that whole cast, fantastic writing. Um, just, it's amazing. It really yeah. is. It, it is a gift. Uh, we we had a wonderful time shooting the third season, which is on right now Sunday nights, uh, ten o'clock uh, in the. Whoops! It's hello, my hello. Son. <laughs> my son is calling. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Oh, they're gone. Okay. okay. <laughs> that was quick. But you always have to take your son. Of course. Uh, you know, uh, he is uh, directing in England. Oh. With his wife and daughter, uh, Francis Joan of six months. As a matter of fact, Francis Joan and I have done two TikToks. Uh, we have done the Apple song and the strawberry song. The Apple song is her favorite. Oh, yeah. I believe I believe you shared your first TikTok with us uh, when you first dropped it. Uh, I believe it was at the behest of one of your grandkids that got you into it. Yes, uh, they. Um, I danced with my my older uh, grandchildren, uh, Lulu, India, and Ace, uh, and uh, we had a really good time. A lot of twerking. <laughs> Yeah, you still got it. <laughs> oh my goodness! So, yeah, uh, so let's. Uh, we've never really talked about Barry, so uh, if it's okay, let's uh, take a minute about that. How did Barry begin for you? When did you? Uh, when did it first come a blip in your radar? You know what? Like, hey. Actually, my wife and I were driving down uh, Ventura Boulevard, which is on the other side of the hill here in Los Angeles. It's in the valley. We left a um, a meeting about wills and estates and I didn't know what they were talking about and we're driving and all of a sudden I get a call and the agent says uh hey Bill Hader Bill Hader uh called and uh, he's with uh, HBO HBO I've never worked there and uh they have you're on a short list 
And I said, is Dustin Hoffman on that list? Because if he is, I'm not going in because he's going to get it. He's an Academy Award winner. They said, no, he's not on the list. I went, okay. Uh, so I, they sent me the script. My son, who we just talked about, Max, was at my house. He read the script, directed me in the audition. I went in the next day. And, um, and then the process went on. And I was lucky enough for them to call me. And Bill said, you know, I really would like you to play this character. And I think, and uh, I, I, I concur with him. Uh, it was the best fit and certainly, uh, well, I, and I think the, uh, the Emmy committee certainly agrees as well. <laughs> well, that was wonderful. That really was a great thing. Um, you know, you heard the announcer say, this is Henry Winkler, 1000th nomination, his first win. <laughs> and, uh, but it was, it was glorious. It was glorious. And two days ago, uh, they announced that we were picked up for our fourth season. So the writers are busy writing away. Uh, if you haven't caught up, there are two, uh, season one and two, there are eight episodes each season. And I believe that it will delight you. It is a serial comedy about a hitman who wants to be an actor. And I'm his acting teacher. Uh, <laughs> the only, uh, you know, uh, I, I've written that speech for 40 years. Wow. And uh, the only thing that uh, that lasted was I said, all right, kids, you can go to sleep now. Daddy's one. Of course, my kids are 50, 41 and 37. But um, I, you know, I gave them permission. Oh, absolutely. Well, again, again, it's it's a brilliant show, and again, I I really enjoy good meta satire of the entertainment industry, and I think uh, that just does it really, really well. And again, your your role as an acting coach, uh, again, it's 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 a role inside of a role inside of a role from your own perspective. Did you uh, draw any inspiration from anyone you knew in the business from it? You know, from all of my teachers, from uh, I have taught six classes, um, starting at Northwestern. I taught um, a, a master class, Emerson College, uh, South by Southwest down in Austin, the Vulture um, site. And I had a most wonderful time. And I took all of my experience and then i took what they wrote bill and alec berg uh conglomerated it if there's such a word put it inside and out came gene there you go there you go we are our our our, our roles proud. our our roles are bits and pieces from our from our life but that is really true that's what acting is about acting is being a mirror because we are all the same actually, is being a mirror that holds up to the um, uh, society at large so that we can see who we are, what we're doing, where we could go, uh, what we could change. That really is our job, not just being a celebrity. So from what part of your uh, life or psyche did you pull Keith the grief from? Oh, my goodness. Um, that was amazing. I play a cashmere sweater on human resources. Uh, Keith from grief. I'm a grief counselor. And uh, I, it, he is delightful. <laughs> he is um, very strict. You know, if you don't put in the time, you cannot get over uh, being uh, feeling horrible. So, yep, there he is. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he is, he's really supportive and cozy. He's very cozy. Yes. And uh, you're no stranger to animation, but this will be your first adult animation role, I believe. Yes, actually it is. I play the grandfather on Rugrats. 
mm-hmm. which is a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, I also play, oh, Fritz, the head of the factory floor in Monsters at Work on yes. Disney+. Plus. And he is just delightful. He breaks into song, you know, give me a subject, any subject. Taxes. Taxes? Yes. I always pay my taxes because if I don't, they'll come looking for me and take my fruit roll ups. <laughs> <laughs> I just wrote that. I believe it. <laughs> well, as always, Henry, I, it's it's so wonderful to see you. <laughs> now you know what I was thinking that I would like to read a little bit of Hank Zipser. Of course, this one is called Holy Enchilada, but the actual title they didn't let us put on the book is Holy Enchilada. My teacher has gas. And this <laughs> was my real teacher, Miss Adolph. I think she was related. <laughs> oh, it's International Day. We had to make uh, a food, an international food. I made enchiladas, enchiladas. And it, it called for one third of a cup of chili powder. I thought it was one cup three times. Okay. <laughs> so all of a sudden in the middle of the, of the room, there was a commotion. Everybody sa- said, Oh, give Miss Adolf some room. Give her some room. People had gathered around. Step away. Give me some air. When the parents moved away, we saw what they were surrounding was Miss Adolf. She didn't look good. Well, not that she ever looks good. But it was, she did not look good at all. Her face was turning bright red. I had never seen that color in a face before. The next thing we knew, Miss Adolf let out a noise that wasn't human. It was not a sound I had ever heard before. It was somewhere between a cough, a hiss, and a gasp. Water, she gasped. I need water. She sounded like the golem from the, the Lord of the Rings. She was hissing pretty loudly, and all of a sudden, Her face looked like a tomato that was ready to explode. She started to move across the multi-purpose room like she had a rocket under her skirt. You go, girlfriend, my best friend Frankie whispered under his breath. Ashley burst out laughing. I didn't want to laugh, so I concentrated on just smiling very, very hard. I mean, sometimes you got to keep a laugh inside. Oh, what's happening to that poor woman? Mrs. Moriarty wanted to know. Must have been something she ate, Principal Love said. Then he turned and looked directly at me. I hope it wasn't your enchilada. (laughs) Oh, and real quick, Henry, for audiences maybe joining us for the first time, tell us about the Hank Zipser series, because I know it is very near and dear to your heart. Absolutely. Well, um, the there are there are two. There is the Here's Hank, which is the second grade, first grade, second grade, third. And, uh, it uses a font that has never been used in America before. It makes the eye and the page be very good friends. I wish I had it. This one, he finds his first puppy in the pound. And of course, he doesn't know how to be responsible. So he learns very quickly. (laughs) This one stars his cousin from Chicago, who is a chef. This is called, you can't drink a meatball through a straw. She is a chef and she enters a contest on TV. And somehow Hank gets in that same contest. Of course, we also have the seventh, sixth, and fourth grade, fifth grade, uh, alien superstar. This alien has to leave his repressive planet in order to live a, a free life. 
and he lands on the back lot of Universal Studios. And I don't know how this happens. He gets a job on a sitcom because he's already got the costume. And it is about really the un and the also stars uh, a young girl who is the star of the sitcom, who's a singer. But they all these books are about the children who seem to be on the outside of the glass, looking in, wanting to be part of the bigger picture, and how it is that they are good enough, no matter how what their struggle is. They are good enough. And we're now in uh, seven languages and uh, over five million books and very, um, very proud. I really am. And that font, of course, is, was designed to help facilitate reading for dyslexic readers? Yes. This font is called uh, Dyslexi, and it was invented by a dad in Holland for his children because they are actually dyslexic. And um, uh, Here's Hank was the first book in America uh, that actually adopted it, that makes it much easier for the eye to track words across the page. And there you have it. And of course, and they're funny. you know, the books are funny first. They're not uh, self-help books, no. um, but kids read them and they wonder, wow, I'm not alone. This, how did you know me so well? Yeah. So that's, it's great. Cause one out of five has some sort of learning challenge. Absolutely. And, uh, and again, they are wonderful books and they are out there and there's always our audience. You can find them wherever fine books are sold. And yeah. Also, um, if you, uh, buy one through, uh, Galaxy Con, I do have them here. Uh, let them know and I will sign one to you or to your child or a child you know. And there you have it. Henry, you, you and Bill are truly the two busiest men I know. Well, we have a great time. Bill, you know, Bill um, has read every book on the planet. And he Sad. wants you to know what's on every page. Yes. Uh, this week, I'm going to give him an achievement award. Um, uh, this, I hope I'm I'm well enough to do it. I think I will be. Uh, and I'm very proud that I was asked to give him uh, his lifetime achievement award because he is an amazement. The energy, the life force, the knowledge. Yes. He's great. The curmudgeon that he is. <laughs> uh, well, once again, Henry, thank you for indulging my capricious curiosity. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. We're going to go to audience questions, so let's go ahead and hear from them. I would like to hear a question from the audience, Patty. Hey, let's have it. Hey, here's one from Roslyn. Did you ever act in school plays uh, as a child? You know, uh, I did in the in in um, uh, preschool. I was a tube of toothpaste. I was uh, happy. Uh, one of the seven dwarfs. Uh, I didn't know I had dyslexia, so I was stupid and but very happy. Uh, and then, of course, in high school, I couldn't really do extracurricular activities because my grades were so low. But I did do a musical in the 11th grade at McBurney School for Boys called Of the Ice Cream. <coughs> and I, uh, I was in heaven, uh, but it was the only play that I was allowed to do. The one thing that I was put on this earth to try, they didn't let me do. But I had to take geometry for four years. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, Rosalind. Yeah, Rosalind. Great I dated a girl time. from Rosalind, Long Island. Mm, well, there you have it. <laughs> what do we have next? Here's one from Alex, who wants to know, what was the best eatery uh, that you enjoyed while growing up? Okay, okay. Well, mm. growing up. So let me just say, right now, in New York City, for me, the best cheeseburger in America is the burger joint in the lobby of the Parker Meridian Hotel on 57th Street. 
Okay. I'm just saying, I, I, I never I, miss it. Come to New York, get off the plane, go and have a cheeseburger. I am a big cheeseburger fan. You know, I haven't so. seen it one in a long time. Go to a Broadway play. It gets out. We walk directly because it closes at 11 mm. to the burger joint, have a cheeseburger at 11 o'clock at night, and then moan until six in the morning. <laughs> uh, that sounds like a burger I want. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, there you have it. So that's 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 the place. Now, was there a favorite place you had as a kid? When I was growing up, Schraff's. Schraff's was like a um, a glorified um, uh, uh, drugstore, uh, a glorified um, place where you you dressed up to go to eat, and they had a vanilla pineapple um, milkshake. Hmm. And it was great. Now, let me just say, you cannot, you cannot drink chunks of pineapple through a straw, just like you cannot yep. drink a meatball through yeah. a straw. But I, I Schraff's was great. I got, uh, I got um, when we drove in a car, I would get very nauseous. And there was a, a Frankfurter stand on many corners in New York City called Needix. Needix, and they had an orange drink, and that was the only drink I could use to take Dramamine in order not to be nauseous on the car ride. No Needix, no Dramamine, vomiting. There you, there you have it. All right. <clears throat> yeah, that. Uh, yeah, I had to explain to some youngins about the old style drugstores and the egg cream days, but oh, for my time, but at the, yeah. The end of our uh, uh, street was Peggy's, drugstore, magazines, candy galore. Yeah. Uh, you could get dots on pieces of paper, you know, all those dots. They still and have those. those. Little um, aluminum cups with the tiniest spoon with the worst candy ever, but. Oh, it tasted so good. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Alex, there you go. Bon appetit. And uh, what do we have next? Hey, from Lisa, number one Trek fan. Uh, ooh. And I know you tend, you like to keep uh, everything from all your sets. So do you have an all-time favorite of uh, your memorabilia you've taken from sets? Well, you know, I just had an auction yes. where I, I put 27 boxes of memorabilia up for auction through Bonham and I kept uh, two uh, jackets. The, the, the first Fonz jacket I ever wore was stolen mm. and then they made six. Gary Marshall had one, I gave one to the Smithsonian. Yes. Uh, I had, uh, we ripped the lining out of uh, one of them for me to jump the shark. And then, uh, then I, there were three left and I have two of those. One I put up for auction last December. I would have to say not only the jackets, but the softballs. I played softball for the Happy Days team. I never played ball before. I never had good eye-hand coordination. And I saved the softballs that I pitched uh, high winning scores. There you have it. <clears throat> there you have Oh, this is a left field question of my own, but I, I keep forgetting to ask you, who has the, the prop that, of the dead man's gun? I do. You uh, do? I, the actual gun? Yeah. Yes, I have, the, I have the rubber gun from the dead man's gun, which was 44... Uh, 44 episodes of um, uh, 1786, uh, whoever picked up this pistol, uh, their life was changed forever. Then either th it was shot out of their hand, they were killed, or they just gave it away. But whoever picked it up again, their life was um, completely changed. Again, a wonderful series. Thank Absolutely you. wonderful anthology Great series. Great storytelling. Yes, and uh, your episode as the hangman, I, I think, is one of my favorite performances of yours. Thank you. I, I went from a button salesman to the sheriff of the town. <laughs> yeah. I had the gun. Absolutely. Yeah, Lisa, as always, great question. Thank you for that. Yeah, what do we have next? 
Mike from Chicago. I said, Avid Angler, what has been your most memorable fishing experience? Mm. I was very lucky. Years ago, I went, now there is great fishing in America, but I was lucky enough to go, um, now here's why it's terrific to be a celebrity. They call you up and they say, hey, want to go to New Zealand? We'll outfit you. You can bring your son. We'll put you up. We'll dress you and you'll fish for 10 days. Another trip I took was to uh, Argentina, the southern tip of Argentina, Rio Pico. Oh, my goodness. The fish were so big, you could have ridden them back to L.A. Wow. 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 And you, and you still gave him a kiss and let him go? Gave him a kiss and let him go. <laughs> yeah. The, the trout are too majestic to uh to keep or to harm there you have it mike from chicago thank you wonderful question ah what's next from fred would you ever consider turning uh, your books into an animated series sure uh we're trying right now to turn alien superstar it's actually a trilogy there are three of them and uh, we are uh, trying to turn them into an animated show or um, a feature. Uh, it doesn't matter, but it, it, it's a great story about an alien here on Earth. What happens if people find out who he really is? Will they still like him? Mm. That is a dilemma that children deal with all the time. If you knew the real me, would you still be friends with me? Yeah. 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 That's, that is a conundrum. Yeah. There you have it. There you have it, Fred. So stay tuned. <laughs> uh, what do we have next? One from Alex. What advice can you give to young adults in writing, acting, or coping with a disability? You know what I would say? I would say there are lots of outlets. There are school plays, temple plays, church plays, community theater. Um, there are opportunities in the professional world. But this is what it counts. It counts on your tenacity. Be honest about your talent, train your talent, and then Take yourself and be in a place where there are opportunities in the first place for you to be a professional. Uh, New York, Chicago, uh, L.A., you know, it is hard for everyone, whether you have a disability or not. The challenge is yours. And I will say, trying makes your life so much richer than being afraid. Yeah, I would agree. Very nice. I see we have a new panelist. Who's our uh, canine friend in the background? Well, oh, wait a minute. Oh, hi. <laughs> this is Maisie. And Maisie is a golden doodle. Oh. Maisie, come on, don't be shy. And uh, she is a lovely two-year-old and very loyal. Oh, my gosh. I love her so much. Oh, very adorable. And Alex, thank you. That was a wonderful question. Oh, all right. What was that next one we had from Lana? Oh, boy. <clears throat> I'm a, I'll, I'll slightly rephrase this. Uh, what was one of your favorite episodes of Happy Days? You know, here's the truth. I have been asked that question many, many times. I, I don't have a favorite. Every time I do something, that's my favorite. This, this is it. This, this is the best. Yeah. And then I do something. I'll go, no, oh, no, wait a minute. Th this one is the best. I'll tell you what I what is wonderful. I'll tell you what is the best that I get to still be so vital 
in my passion. I, there are no words for that, actually. I'm a pretty verbal guy. I literally am speechless when it comes to expressing how filled with gratitude I am that I get to do what I do. Uh, that's the truth. So I don't have a favorite. Living is my favorite. There you go. There you go. Me, personally, is when Fonzie met the Lone Ranger, but that's all right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I have the silver bullet somewhere. I didn't put oh, that up for auction. Yeah. Oh, good on you. All right. And there you have it, Lana. And what do we have next? From Amber. What's your favorite memory during the making of Holes? A very, very delightful film. Oh, I'll tell you exactly. First of all, um, that was a, a wonderful project. And because there were very few lines for the father, and because I cannot be quiet, I had lived a lot in that movie. And the entire thing when the policeman comes and I ask, can I smell your shoes? because I have figured out peaches and onions. It was not in the script, it was all made up. And the fact that it made it into the film was uh, just, uh, it felt great. It felt great. Uh, that, that, is, that is nice when the director and editor say, yeah, leave that in. Because <laughs> you never see that, you never find out until you go to the screening. Yeah, right. You don't know, yes. Because you have no um, uh, no say in the process of editing, you know. As a producer, I do, but I was only a hired actor on that. So, yeah, there you go. Some of you always say, "Yeah, maybe we'll keep that," you know, to keep your fingers crossed. But Amber, great question. Thank you. Uh, and here's one from Andre. Ah, what first inspired you to write the children's books? Do you know that's a good question because I was not inspired. Uh, it was a time filler. You know, uh, being dyslexic, being told I was stupid, you believe it. So somewhere in the back of your mind, this is a needling, noodling thought. Come on, you're stupid. You can't do that. And I literally said to the person who suggested it, I can't write books. He said, I'll introduce you to Lynn Oliver. I said, okay. So we had lunch. But... Then we we cracked Hank Zipser over the lunch, and I gave it to my wonderful agent, Esther Newberg. She sold four books, all right? That was it. That, they were going to take, I was a celebrity, they were going to take the name, uh, and that they, limited to four books. We have just written our 39th novel. So here's the lesson. You don't know what you can accomplish until you try. You know, you say, oh, I'm too old. Oh, I have no time. Oh, I'm so busy. Oh, I couldn't really get that. Oh, I, I just don't know where to start. Now is exactly the moment that you say, I'm going to try. And you will be shocked. And where you end up. There you have it. Indeed. Andre, thank you. It's a wonderful question. Ah, what do we have next? And here's one from Maria. Ooh, do you have a favorite genre of music? You know what? I love music. I can't make music. So I depend upon the kindness of strangers. I love classical music. I love the boss. I love Brandy Carlisle. I love Sia. I love uh, Bruno Mars. Um, I love um, uh, Cat Stevens. I love Mumford and Son. Uh, all the way back to Moody Blues. Uh, so I listen to everything. I really do. On the on the plane, I, I made a playlist of just all my my um, my library. And I just listen to these songs that go, oh, I haven't heard that in a long. Oh, the Water Boys from Ireland. Great. Cool. You gave us a really, really nice, uh, nice list. There you go, Maria. 
Straight hit those up on Spotify. Okay. What do we have next? Hey, you know, I don't know how to use Spotify. I've never used Spotify or Pandora. Actually, neither do I. I sort of like I see those click buttons until I stop at something that I like. So, yeah, uh, I, I I I have never been able to figure that out. It, it well, Spotify is a very challenging interface. I they they need a little consultation on that, in my opinion. So I don't blame you on that. So, oh, Brady was the, how'd you come up with the names for your books? Now that is that's interesting because Lynn Oliver is really obsessed with getting the right title because um, when a book is on a shelf and you know, the book is on a shelf and then the kid takes it down, you have three seconds for them to make a decision on whether they're going to keep that book or put it back on the shelf. Mm -hmm. So this one is called the soggy foggy camp out. Um, and he goes with um, with his parents to be in the woods, you know. However, there's a storm, and it blows their tent away. So uh, it we we really work and kick around hundreds of names until one just goes, "Wow, I like that a lot." Robot on the loose. He has a an assignment. He has to build a robot, and he builds it out of Chinese takeaway, um, uh, you know, utensils. Okay. Yeah, and his uh, Legos. <laughs> there you have it. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you, Brady. Great question. Uh, yeah, what do we have next? His own from Andre. If you could have your own Happy Days restaurant, what would you call it? What would I call it? I would call it, I would call it great food. No kidding. There you have it. And I would make sure that we got people uh, who work there who loved making food. And then, you know, because this is what always shocks me. Everybody has um they they have access to the same ingredients and then some people make i don't know what bleh, out of it and some people make oh my goodness that is good i'm not kidding I you mean, know yeah, no, you're right and and it's just a matter of the imagination and the love that goes into making that food. And there has been a rise in the past decade at um, cooking is falling back into more of an artisan type of thing. A lot yeah. of people are discovering cooking for the passion of it as a craft and an art, as opposed to and assembly let, line. Uh, since I don't really do it, I'm very grateful. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there is nothing like sitting down and having a good meal. So if I, so when I go into uh, I go into your restaurant, I will be able to order a pineapple milkshake, right? Good food, no kidding. Mm. Thank you, Andre. Fun question. Ah, I think we have time for one or two more. Let's see what we have. And here's one from Jolene. Oh, well, I know game shows. I know I know you certainly have a relationship with one. If you could be on any game show, past, present, or future, what would it be? Well, Michael Levitt and I co uh, executive produced Hollywood Squares for two years, and it was just incredible. If we filled, Claudia Kagan helped us uh, as our casting person fill the eight slots or the nine slots. And if we did that correctly, I had to change my underwear. It was so funny. We put Big Show, the wrestler who didn't fit yeah. in the square next to Mama uh, uh, and Vicky Lawrence. Yeah. And 
you know, there was no wall between the uh, the uh, the squares. And every time he answered, she would beat him to a pulp with her purse. And it, we didn't plan it. We didn't ask her. She just, it, I, I'm telling you to this day, when I think about it, I, I wet my pants. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great run. Absolutely great run. Uh, Jolene, thank you. That was a fun one. I think we have time for one more. Let's see what we can go out on a really wacky one. Here's one from Cherry. If you woke up with a superpower, <laughs> what power would you have and what would you do with it? My superpower. Does it have to be one, do you think, that's already established? It could be any power that you want. And my to power, I this, I'm not kidding. My superpower would be to stop the the um the lack uh, 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 the 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 inability to just hear people's point of view it would just just be to bring the temperature down not only in the world but in our country that I, I have to say, that is what is the most scary to me. I that people are just being moved to shoot other people because I don't know why. I oh I, my god, I, yeah, I, I agree. So, uh, social media has some some good benefits and everything else too, but also sometimes it's like an unwanted telepathy where people I don't know, I'm suddenly seeing something that they would never say to my face. Yeah. That they would, they would never, they would never say in a crowded elevator, uh, blah, 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 blah. Like, like, I don't, right. I, did, I didn't ask. I didn't want to know. Right. You know? Or to walk into a supermarket. I mean, you know, it, yeah. Uh, yeah. really, I, you know, it, it, I, I, I think about when there is a, um, a natural disaster, and you're on your roof and the the water is up to the top floor and somebody is coming in a boat i don't think you're thinking about what race that person is in the boat i think you're only thinking about oh thank you so much for getting me off this roof we take care of each other in the extreme why can't we take care of each other every day? Yeah. I, I I don't mean to be, you know, uh, oh, man, I, it just is. And then I have grandchildren, and I think, what, what? Where is the America that I studied so hard in in first and second and third and fourth grade? Where is the America I studied so hard? about um we have got checkpoints and we've got checks and balances and we listen to each other and we argue and we really care about the population as opposed to profit got a little heavy there but oh. that would be my superpower i think that would be a worthy one and uh yeah i i Bringing the temperature down, I think, is a very good way of putting it. Yeah. I, uh, you know, it, it could have been flying at one time, but that is so unimportant compared to where we are now. Henry, as always, absolute delight. Any final words before we take our leave? Yes, I would. I have a final word, and that is that I really appreciate you, Patty, because you just you, – you lead this conversation beautifully – and uh, it just is always a pleasure to spend time with you. That's my final word. Uh, I will absolutely take it. Henry, as always, thank you for okay. joining oh, us today. I have, I have one final word. Bunt cake. E easy to say, hard to make. <laughs>
Uh, Henry, as always, thank you for joining us. Thank you to our audience for joining us. And as always, thank you all for your great questions. Hope to see everybody again soon. Until then, bye-bye, take care. And remember, friends, smiles are free. Please spend them often.